Hello, marine biology people. I'm here today to talk to you about worms. Okay, so maybe you're not as excited as I am to learn about worms. I get it. I understand. But whenever we talk about marine biology or zoology, the discussion of worms is inevitable. There are billions of worms on this planet. There are so many worms, it would blow your mind. And there's worms that can literally blow your mind and eat your mind and all kinds of terrible, disgusting things. The reason we discuss worms is because within a few different phyla, we can see a hierarchy of complexness through evolution and the development of many evolutionary structures that we see in all of the more complex animals. So when we study worms, we can study a couple different phyla and we can see how organs developed evolutionarily and through time. So in marine biology, there's four major phyla of worms that we discuss. We discuss platyhelminthus, the flatworms, nemertia, the ribbon worms, nematoda, the round worms, and Annelida, the segmented worms. So we are gonna discuss these four phyla of worms and their anatomical structures that have evolved over time. What do you got, Luna? I got worms. Let's begin by discussing our first phyla of worm, platyhelminthes. Helminthes means worm, platy means flat. Platy helminthes, these are the flat worms. Now, they're not that complicated as far as animals go, as far as worms go, but they are a lot more complicated than the previous phyla we've discussed, like periphera, the sea sponges, which have no tissue, no muscle, no brain, not much of anything. Nidaria, the sea jellies, which only have two tissue layers, still no brain. Platyhelminthes has three tissue layers, becoming more complex. They are bilateral, just like me. You can cut me down the middle and you have one of everything on both sides. They have a forward and a rear. They have a front and a back. And so we're getting more complex in body structure. And are you ready for this? They have a brain. Okay, so this is our first animal in marine biology that we're discussing that has a brain. Well, it's an aggregation of nerves in a central location. Yeah, okay, brain. All right, so platyhelminthes have a brain. They do not have a complete digestive tract, meaning they do not have a mouth and an anus. This means that food goes in one opening and then it gets digested and then gets spit out of that same opening. The mouth is more of a pharynx that is in the middle of the body where it'll pull food in. It will use its uh, gastrovascular cavity, its gut area to absorb the nutrients and then it will spit this out once it is done. Most platyhelminthes are parasites. Like the tapeworm is a platyhelminthes. The flukes, these are platyhelminthes. And so they're usually parasites, but in the ocean, there is a class of platyhelminthes called turbellarians. Turbellarians are these beautiful flatworms. They are free living, meaning that they are not parasites, and they're carnivores. It is a flatworm that hunts. Ew! Let's talk about our second phyla of worm, Nemertia, the ribbon worms. Nemertine worms are a little more complex than platyhelminthes. They have a circulatory system, meaning that they can move fluid around inside their body. They have a complete digestive tract, meaning that they have a mouth and an anus. And the, probably the most distinguishing feature of the nemertine worms is their proboscis. A proboscis is a large feeding tube. Think of like the feeding tube that a butterfly uses to suck nectar. This is called a proboscis as well. Also think of the feeding tube that a mosquito uses to draw blood. That is also called a proboscis. And so nemertine worms have a very long proboscis. They can eject the proboscis from their mouth. It has a razor sharp harpoon on the other end. It can penetrate into a living organism 
and then start sucking their insides out. And this is how nemertine worms will eat. Nemertine worms have been recorded to grow over a hundred feet. This would make them the longest animal on the planet. Not the largest, but the longest. Blue whales have been recorded at a hundred feet. Nemertine worms over a hundred feet. Let's talk about our third file of worm, nematoda. The nematodes are round worms. Many of them are parasitic. They're usually very tiny, maybe even microscopic. Probably one of the more famous marine nematodes is Anasakis. The reason it's so famous is because it's one that is a parasite to us. The way that Anasakis' life cycle works is the larvae float around in the ocean as plankton and shrimp will eat the larvae. Then what happens is the larvae will then live off of the shrimp growing in size until a fish comes and eats that shrimp. Then once in the fish, then the Anasakis worm will burrow into the meat of the fish, waiting for a dolphin or other marine mammal to come eat that fish. Once a marine mammal eats that fish, the Anasakis worms move to the intestines of that marine mammal and begin reproducing and then new larvae are expelled by this marine mammal. The reason that this could affect us is we're also a mammal, and so the Anasakis worm doesn't care if it's inside a dolphin or inside a human. And what could happen is if you get a fish that has Anasakis worms in its muscle and you don't cook this fish or you don't freeze the fish properly, what happens is you will ingest the Anasakis worms and then they'll move to your intestines where they will begin to reproduce. You are at risk of Anasakis worms if you eat sashimi or ceviche, which are undercooked fish or non-cooked fish. And so the worms can persist and then infect a human. So most nematodes are parasites, but there's also tons of them in our soil that's very beneficial. If you take a handful of ocean sediment or even land soil, you probably have a thousand different nematodes in your hand. So nematodes are everywhere some of them very horrifying and scary. Our fourth phyla of marine worm is Annelida. Annelida are the segmented worms. They have segments down their body, just like an earthworm. And these are the most complex of worms. They have complicated brains, they have complicated muscles, they have a closed circulatory system, meaning that they actually have veins. They have a complete digestive tract. And so now with Annelida, we're looking at an organ system that is more similar to the animals that we're used to, like the land terrestrial animals like mammals and reptiles and birds. And so Annelida is an evolutionary step towards these other land animals. Now, Annelida in the ocean is mostly the class Polychaeta, so polychaetes. Polychaetes are these segmented worms that spend a lot of time in the sediment. They're very important for the ecosystem because they help aerate the sediment in the ocean floor. Many of them have parapoda, which are these little tiny leg-like structures all over their body that help them crawl and move around the ocean floor. I hope you enjoyed learning about these four phyla of marine worms, Platyhelminthes, Nemertia, Nematoda, and Annelida. I will see you next time.